Welcome to Biosafety Basics, brought to you by Quip Laboratories. Your facility has rules, some of which are easy to remember, like don't wear flip-flops and never pipette by mouth. Seriously. And some of them are more complicated and specific to your lab only. Many of your lab's rules fall under the greater heading of biosafety, and it pays from time to time to brush up on these rules to make sure that you and your lab are safe and the people in it are protected. So what is biosafety? Biosafety is the prevention of large-scale loss of biological integrity, focusing both on ecology and human health. Biosafety is used to protect from harmful incidents and keep contained bacteria and viruses well contained. Biosafety is important because of the thousands of labs around the world that process infectious agents or create environments that allow infectious agents to exist. Different labs have different biosafety levels. For example, biosafety level 1 labs work with the least dangerous agents and therefore require the fewest precautions, while biosafety level 4 labs require the strictest protocols because the infectious agents they handle pose such a great risk. But regardless of the level of your lab, knowing the basics of biosafety is absolutely imperative to protecting yourself and those around you. Basic safety for labs that require biosafety protocols is very similar to standard lab safety and follows common sense. Basic biosafety rules include no eating or drinking, never adjust your contacts or apply cosmetics while in the lab, never wear sandals or shorts, or that shirt that you love that shows off your rockin' abs. In case of emergency, every lab is required to have a first aid and spill kit, and you should immediately alert your laboratory biosafety officer if you feel that you've in any way mishandled or been exposed to an infectious agent. While we're talking lab safety, remember that you can find information on the chemical products in your facility in safety data sheets or SDS sheets, which were previously known as MSDS sheets. You can find these in your facility or by easily searching online. In fact, we've even got a handy lookup for every Quip Labs product, which you'll find at www.quiplabs.com slash SDS quick dash access, which we'll link down below. Now that we've got some safety basics out of the way, let's talk PPE or personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment refers to protective clothing, gloves, goggles, or other equipment designed to protect your body from injury or infection. PPE should be chosen based on the work being completed, worn and stored only inside the laboratory, and all employees utilizing PPE should be properly trained with their equipment. You can find more information on the PPE recommended for your biosafety level in the CDC link below. But for now, let's move on to microbes. What are microbes? Microbes are things like bacteria and viruses that are too small to see with the naked eye. They exist on every surface and in every environment on Earth. At Quip Labs, you'll often hear us refer to pathogens in our videos and on our website, which are just microbes that can cause diseases. How can we make sure we're not inadvertently affected by the microbes in our facility? In order to keep ourselves safe, we need to be careful when storing and transporting biological materials using secondary shatterproof containers where necessary. We need to make sure we're using EPA-registered disinfectants and sterilants, which have label claims for the specific bacteria and viruses we're targeting. And we need to adhere to all of the biosafety protocols and guidelines required for our facility. Fun fact, the time required for a control agent to kill 90% of the microorganisms or spores in a sample under specified conditions is called the D-value. How do disinfectants, sterilants, and antimicrobial agents work? Well, different types of disinfectants break down different microbes differently. For example, phenolics denature proteins and disrupt cell membranes, while quaternary ammonia disinfectants cause the cytoplasmic membrane to leak. But we'll go into that more in a future video. For now, just know that choosing the correct disinfectant for you is very important. What factors can affect the efficacy of your disinfectants? Well, besides the fact that different types of disinfectants and sterilants can kill different microorganisms, efficacy can also be affected by the concentration of the antimicrobial agent, composition of microbial population, and the contact time. Probably the most common question we get is whether labs can just use bleach. While bleach has proven efficacy against a number of pathogens, it can also break down materials around the lab, which provides those same microorganisms more places to hide. You can watch our video linked above and in the comments for more info. Is disinfection the same as sterilization? The process by which all living cells, spores, and acellular entities are either destroyed or removed is called sterilization which is different from disinfection in its completeness. You should always know whether or not your lab requires disinfection or full sterilization and which products you need to achieve that sterilization. Lastly, we need to cover biological safety cabinets. 
No matter what kind of biological materials you're handling, you should always remember to wash your hands completely with an iodine hand soap before and after using a biological safety cabinet. Make sure you never store items in the cabinet, such as pipettes and gloves, and don't forget to disinfect all work surfaces before and after using the BSC, as well as disinfect all items that go into and come out of it. And it's also worth mentioning that although they've shown to be effective in limited capacities, the CDC and the American Biological Safety Association do not support the installation of ultraviolet lamps in biological safety cabinets. These lamps can provide a false sense of security as they're not registered by the EPA and cannot guarantee their efficacy in the same way as a chemical disinfectant. Well, that's it for your biosafety basics. When you're ready, click the link in the description below marked Biosafety Basics Quiz to test your knowledge and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the Biosafety Basics video brought to you by Quip Laboratories. Remember, Quip Labs makes it safe, simply and sensibly.